Crane Brinton, an American historian, developed a theory for analyzing revolutions that somewhat resembled a disease. He had split it into four stages, the incubation, the moderate, the crisis, and the recovery stage. The theory began with the incubation stage, symbolizing the start of a revolution. It usually involves some sort of event that evokes anger in the people. Some examples may include an economic crisis, a weak ruler, class division, or government injustice. In the moderate stage, peaceful protests usually happen. There's usually no violence involved, but as the revolution moves towards the crisis stage, the main events happen. Wars are waged, politicians are assassinated, and the radicals may gain power. The recovery stage marks the end of the revolution, the radicals lose power, and everything begins to return to normal. Like most revolutions, the events start with some protests and disputes, usually from common villagers being unsatisfied about something. In this case, the protests were about the ownership of the railroad, thus beginning the Xinhai Revolution in October 1911. The real beginning to the action started when a Republican-minded army unit mutinied in Wuchang, Hubei. The rebellious spirit spread to surrounding regions, igniting a revolutionary sentiment. Slowly, like a spreading fire, they influenced other people, who then joined them. In April 1911, an agreement was signed by a group of foreign bankers for the construction of the lines for the railway. The salary the company offered its workers didn't meet their expectations. This then resulted in mutiny. Moving on to stage two, which is the moderate stage. In this stage, the first uprising occurred. The reason the uprising happened was because of an explosion that occurred during the moving of illegal bombs. The rebels leader, Sun Wu, was severely injured in the explosion resulting in the government finding his location. On October 10th or Double Ten Day, rebel soldiers seized control of the city and declared the city a republican government. They then hoisted a flag with 18 connected stars representing the unification of China's 18 provinces. Many important events happened in the crisis stage. After the first uprising, 22 more uprisings occurred in the aftermath of the Wu Cheng uprising. On November 1st, the Qing rulers summoned Yuan Shikai from retirement, who proceeded to fight against the revolution. Meanwhile, Sun Yixian, a revolutionary, was exiled for assisting the revolution. Soon after, Yuan Shikai betrayed the government and joined the revolutionaries. After Yuan Shikai betrayed the Qing dynasty, the emperor lost most of the control over his army and territories. That's when the first temporary president of the Republic of China, Sun Yixian, was elected. Around February 15, 1912, the new Chinese government decided to make a deal with the emperor. The deal was to make sure the emperor as well as his family was safe. In return, the emperor had to resign and give up power. After a successful revolt and ending the imperial system, the Republic of China was established. Our first metaphor is the popping of a balloon. The balloon exploding is a representation of when the bomb explodes in the Wu Chang warehouse. For metaphor number two, we have the scale. The scale is a representation of the uprising, showing the balance of power shifting. Our third metaphor is dominoes. The dominoes represent Yuan Shikai fighting against the rebels. Our fourth metaphor is a root change. The change of root represents that Yuan Shikai betrayed the Qing dynasty to join the revolution. Our fifth metaphor is a golf ball knocking another golf ball through a gate. That represents Yuan Shikai making a deal with the emperor. Our sixth metaphor is a circuit going out. That represents the emperor losing power to the Republic of China.